Hey everybody, Mr. Hogger here with a Maya, Aztec, and Inca review as part of your World Before 1750 test study guide for world history. That's a lot of words. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my face off today. <laughs> I, how come I've made myself laugh twice? I haven't really done anything yet. I don't know. But you gotta stay lively. You know what, you're gonna go through how many years of education? If you can do it with a smile on your face, it really doesn't seem so bad. You know how it's like time flies when you're having fun? I know, you're like, class hasn't been fun, Hunger. You, you're having fun. Anyway, we can all have fun together studying Columbus and world before 1750. So in 1492, here's a map, a sketch of what Europeans were aware of in this shaded area here. And I ask a question about what did they not know about? And don't answer like science or like Facebook or something. You're like, we would never answer Facebook. Okay, I got it. Africa, Europe, and Asia, they had a pretty good grasp of, including some of the islands of Malaysia and Indonesia and the Eastern world, had no idea about Australia. They couldn't even put another shrimp on the Barbie mate. That's probably not a good thing to say. And it's not the worst, but it's not good, right? It's not at the top of the things you'd want your teacher to say. But they hadn't explored most of the uh, Pacific and Atlantic. So North America, South America, these things were a blur to them. They had not been discovered so much so that we know the story that Com Columbus was trying to find a path to India, ended up in the Bahamas and named them Indian people. 30 years later, look at how much they had discovered. Wow, look at the work that had gone into this with Vasco da Gama and John Cabot and Ferdinand Magellan. And over the next 100 years, we had a really good idea of the major continents and land masses of the world, having discovered a lot of North America, especially the eastern coast, and setting the groundwork for later England to go and discover and France to colonize the United States, what would be the United States. Magellan having circumnavigated around south tip of South America, the Cape of Good Hope, Magellan ship also circumnavigating and really mapping a lot of the world together and the world became a smaller place. Why do I say that? We talked about it in class, but this is probably one of the longer slides in terms of discussion. With more interactions happening, there were less countries and cultures that were isolated truly on their own. More people, not everybody, but almost everyone could be in contact now with each other access new materials, new ideas, new religions, and not just access, but in some cases, forced interaction of capturing people and taking them to other parts of the world for exploited labor. What it did result in wider trade, uh, expansion of economies and mercantilism and merchant craft around the world of taking things from place A and place B and making item C and selling it to all of the places that didn't have item C, for example. That's a little bit of like math, word algebra, I guess. <laughs> you're like, you're not a math teacher, Hogger. They don't say word algebra. Anyway, more shared experiences. Because we have been now to so many common places, we know more about the world, its environment. We have scientists going and capturing native flora and fauna and making observations. Travel became an important option for wealthy people, and that changed how we interact with our recreational time and how we go places just to see things and experience different environments. And there's less undiscovered, untouched area. Look at all these lines. It looks like somebody like on Good Mythical Morning when they're playing the foods from around the world and they throw the, the cheat and it, they spray their whatever all over the world. If you've never seen that, you have no idea what, it, what I'm talking about, which may be the case more of the time than not. But all that trade led to lots of discovery. Natives were not often treated so well, but the dominant cultures really spread their spice around the world, their social, political, human environment, interaction, culture, and economies and their values. The Treaty of Tordesillas was not something that was really ever in effect in the world, but an effectual understanding between Portugal and Spain to draw an imaginary line down the planet and split half of the world's proceeds, countries, trades, exploits, kind of like go and get it to the victor go the spoils and you take this half and I'll take that half. It just shows to emblemize, that's not a word, I don't think, how powerful Spain and Portugal were, how much influence they had, and how much skill they had in navigating the world that they could go and accomplish anything like that. It'd be one thing to say like to you, you take this half of the country, I'll take the other half. To actually execute and be able to skillfully get around the world is something else. And then it's not just to admire the skill, but also to appreciate the impacts that that would have on all the native people who were already living their life. I made the comparison to the uh, elephant toothpaste filling up the world with Spain and Portuguese ideals. With more people able to read, it also spread a lot of different ideas. 
And this became the standard view of, in our mind, what Middle Ages and Renaissance towns might look like. But before that, it was uh, Aztec, Maya, and Inca. We looked at the island of Egg in Scotland and how there's still some countries living under feudal societies that sometimes have revolts. And there are places in the world that are still mostly untouched, but tourism and, you know, even 60 Minutes gets there eventually and these secrets tend to get out. But people yearn for freedom and ideas like freedom change the world. They also would limit the people who were already involved and had their own ideas of what freedom was, the Maya, the Inca, and the Aztec. So let's take a deeper dive. In case you missed any of class, this should be pretty helpful as a review. Uh, we look at these three civilizations. Empires wouldn't be the right word because the Mayans were not really an empire. As Mesoamerican cultures, Mexico and Central America's indigenous people. How did they get there? The predominant theory being they crossed the Bering Strait land bridge during the last ice age, roughly 20,000 years ago, and crossed over by foot following roughly these patterns, sometimes settling where they found like nicely edemable or redeemable natural resources that would support civilizations. And then if they didn't find any unoccupied land, they would move on to different areas of the country, that being the first theory. Another theory being that they migrated by the coast, probably the Pacific Ocean, using boats and other ship craft to get across. And that seems like a very difficult possibility, but possibility nonetheless, if the Canadians were able to cover large amounts of sea back then by learning the currents in the tidal system. Where did the ancient Maya live? They settled on the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America. I like how the picture says click on the map, but clearly I've copied this picture and found it from a, a STEM presentation that was already existing. I had a student say, but wait, you found this presentation? Well, I adapted it. And don't all of your teachers adapt from the textbooks that we are given? We can all learn lessons from research that's already been laid foundation of, like studying the Maya and figuring out the things that they did. Here's a screenshot from the Maya that you can easily find on a Google search to find out when they lived. AD 250 to 900, they built some of the great stone cities and monuments that have fascinated explorers and scholars and still fuel lots of tourism dollars to the area today in Mexico. There's a picture of the Maya ball game. Not sure if this shows up on the test that I wrote or not, but I know we talked about it in class. Shooting a ball with your hip through a, a hole attached to a wall and the winner being sacrificed to the gods, the MVP. The Maya weren't an empire. They weren't united politically, kind of like ancient Greece. Feel free to pause where needed, by the way. The Maya were made up of city-states, which each had its own rules and ruler. There were many different major cities in the area and still today a lot of the Mayan live in the borders of either Guatemala or up in this area of Chichen Itza where we had a missionary come to our school often and talk to us and show pictures and you know what maybe I should go find that presentation and try to um, copy over some of those photos that would be a good idea uh, I'm gonna write that down <laughs> Father Bill's Maya photos and if I can I'll try to work those into class but they won't be in this video because this is happening real time. <laughs> they built towering temples and palaces. Atop the temples, priests performed religious ceremonies and sacrifices while people watched in the plazas below. So right down here, you'd have the masses of people looking up at the top of those towers. Super original, right? The Indonesian people, Egyptian people, and Mexican people are just three ancient civilizations. Like using the word Mexico isn't really right. It's just like the geographic region where those things are today. But those were all building uh, pyramids. And to me, the Indonesian pyramids look similarly to the, to the uh, Egyptian pyramids. And the Mayan pyramids having this special like rundown area is a special feature. But look at the three openings, how similar they are. The triptychs. Pretty cool. Lots of different knockoffs over time. I copied a few fun photos in there to make some jokes along the way. Blink-182 being our Green Day copy. I noticed I didn't get to the Green Day photo, which was unfortunate. They were polytheistic and did sometimes practice human sacrifice. To what extent is, is a disagreeable assertion that it was happening weekly, possibly, or that it was happening seasonally, like to, to give credit or to give possible credence to the harvest. That might be an occasion where that might be performed. But since they were a people that discovered a 365 day calendar, I could also foresee a situation in which it might've been a habitual routine based on some kind of a timeline or month or week or interval would be a good word. But I wasn't there and 
people's observations have come up with different results because there were different city states that were probably practicing different versions of that tradition in that ex that particular practice. There's a couple more photos there. In there. This one has a nice little bird in it. Not on the desk. Advances in learning also. Another comparison to the Egyptian people. The hieroglyphics writing system, the pictographs, the small pictures and small forms that tell stories that communicate different emotions and feelings and letters even. In the 365 day calendar. The Maya abandoned many of their cities around 900 AD. We're not exactly sure why archaeologists uh, couldn't recover as many tools around that time that give us information, give us clues, but it could have been starvation and a severe drought based on where they were and how dry the climate was. Still about 2 million native ethnic Mayan people today who their lineage draws back to that time period. They live in southern Mexico and Guatemala, like around Chichen Itza as well. The Aztecs invented chocolate. So when we do this in class, I'm going to suggest we all have some. <laughs> That's a nice nation you got there. It'd be a shame if someone discovered it. Made me laugh, but also things like that don't make me laugh because of the truth behind it and the impact. The Aztecs were a Mesoamerican culture that flourished in central Mexico between 1300 and 1521. They lived in the Valley of Mexico in central Mexico. This is northwest of where the Mayans were. Tenochtitlan was the capital city of the Aztec Empire. It was in the middle of a lake, exclamation point. The gods told the Aztecs to search for an eagle holding a snake in its beak perched atop a cactus. This is where they were to build their capital city. The Aztecs saw this sign on a swampy island in Lake Texcoco. There is a sign and an overview picture from what looks like the 70s or taken recently with a Instagram filter to make it look old. The legend, there's a picture of the symbolism that we just talked about, holding a snake on top of a cactus where you will hold your land. Built on an island connected by causeways that lead north, south, and west of the city, it was interlaced with a series of canals so that all sections could be visited by foot or by boat. Today, it's in Mexico City, one of the largest cities in North America. In fact, the number one by population city on our continent. And it's been growing steadily. The Aztecs created an empire through conquest. Conquered local areas had to pay tribute or taxes to the Aztecs. So they were an empire. They had an emperor. They expanded west. They conquered the area. And the Aztecs' emperor's main job was to lead the conquest in war. So not that uh, dissimilar, or I should say, similar to the gunpowder empires, but without the firepower. Expand the empire. Make it as large as you can. There's some images and photos and some artistic interpretations of Mayan emperors and Mayan war heroes. Aztecs were polytheistic. Huitzilopochtli, I know I got that wrong, was the main Aztec god. Huitzilopochtli, that's why I included the pronunciation guide and others I appreciate when other teachers do that too. The Aztecs built massive temples and pyramids dedicated to their gods. There's the pyramid of the sun and the moon. I can't think of any jokes to make there. They look kind of similar to me. Even the, the background, look where the mountains are neat it looks if you told me it was the same picture from a different angle i would believe you <laughs> human sacrifice was a common practice here as well for the reconsecration of great pyramid of tenochtitlan the aztecs reported they sacrificed 84,400 prisoners well there's a crime deferral for you there's a reason to stay out of jail and follow the rules look at all those ripped out hearts Oof. to give the sun strength to rise each day human sacrifices were offered each day Wow, some of us just go to drive through like Starbucks. Wow, that's a lot of sacrifice. Spanish conquistadors led by Hernan Cortes conquered Tenochtitlan and defeated the Aztecs in 1521. The Aztec did have a lot of cool inventions before that happened. I love the way that chocolate, the cocoa beans look on the tree. It looks so neat. And then you can shake them like musical maracas too when they're dried. Anyway, they invented one of the few countries in the world to implement mandatory education. So I'm going to let you appreciate that for a second. Probably the fact that you're here and I'm here. <laughs> like fast times at Ridgemont High. If you're here and I'm here, isn't it technically our time, Mr. Hand? Yeah, mandatory education. Good job, Aztecs. I guess, though, it's funny to think of education going hand in hand with like ritual sacrifice. But I guess that would be part of your education. Chocolate. They get credit for introducing chocolate, probably in the form of hot cocoa first. To the world and then Europeans refining the process. Medicine, the calendar, just like the Mayans, but different. 
independently come up with and gum no gum in class but mayans and aztec studies are allowed okay we got one more the inca civilization flourished in ancient peru so we're getting to south america now between 1400 and 1500 this is the most recent and one of the largest empires ever seen in the americas and at the world at that time oh living up in the clouds living on a prayer we're halfway there not really i mean yes really in the clouds it's way way up high <laughs> why did i go german i don't know the inca controlled an empire in the andes mountains the sapa inca had absolute power the emperor he claimed to be the son of the sun yeah the empire was divided into four regions with the capital of cusco the inca built a massive road network lots of these cool suspension bridges that look very scary across ridges, rivers and gorges lots of walking happening up way up into high elevations you got to go low to get different resources and to get water too they had to be very creative the inca constructed stone temples without using mortars yet the stones fit together so well that a knife wouldn't fit between the cracks in the stones the inca were polytheistic the primary god was inti the sun god and remember the emperor was the son of the sun see a connection there inca believed in reincarnation so here's a connection to india and the hindu cultures and religions and beliefs the inca practiced cranial deformation uh-oh they achieved this by wrapping tight cloth around the heads of newborns to alter the shape of their soft skulls into a cone-like shape i'll withhold comment there the inca performed successful skull surgeries the inca also used medicines to make patients unconscious during surgery so that idea of anesthesia wow pretty pretty advanced each family in a community was assigned a specific role or job government officials arranged marriages and the government organized mandatory public service building projects so people collaborated a lot even on who you're going to marry civil war in the empire broke out and smallpox spread killed a lot of the native population but again some of the ancient peruvians are still living in the area in the traditions of the inca but ultimately here again it was spain otra vez again spain came and this time it was francisco pizarro that brought about the fall of the inca empire some of the inventions they get credit for farming even among the clouds they were able to use specialized technology and to cut out of the mountainside good angles for flat space for farming they tied up in knots created quipus to have uh, statistical information they had floating gardens they had kind of like babylon in some areas and they used a rope system kind of like an abacus for mathematics for accounting for documenting and business exchanges they came up with a lot of indigenized freeze-dried fruit as well because of the um, altitude it wasn't easy to get everything you needed but it was a great way to preserve meat and vegetables and people still do that today it's really neat there's some cool videos online about it the incas used cold evening air to freeze food items in the daytime sun to eliminate frozen moisture and then since they didn't have wagons or wheel-based transportation it's too hard with the terrain up there they traveled by walking or riding llamas to make that possible 10,000 miles of roadways pretty neat some of them are still there some of the bridges are still used and they made them out of wood and stone they were really good at crafting what they had to use and i think that's where we stop man we're gonna pick up the world before 1750 hopefully in a different video i think that one's already made though so i just wanted to get this one in for you mr hogger here thanking you for listening and checking this out and i hope this was helpful in your studies and your review Thanks for paying so much attention. I'm having a great time this year. I hope you are too. Till the next time, we'll see you class dismissed.